guys, February astrology. This is yet again going to be another very epic month of dynamic change, personal transformation. We are probably going to feel like drastically different people by the time that we get to the end of this month. That is because this month on a lot of levels could be sort of like a hero's journey through the underworld. We are dealing with back to back to back to back personal planets aligning with Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. This is something, you guys, that can only happen once every 250 years if things happen to come together at, in the right way at that period of time. So we're talking about some very rare stuff that is happening right now. And we've got a very strong Chiron influence going on as well. A Chiron North Node conjunction is defining a lot of the energy we have this whole month of February. And to start this week, we have several planets and exact aspect to Chiron as well. We also have a Sun square Uranus that is building in the sky. So between the Pluto energy, the Chiron energy and the Uranus energy coming through this week, you guys, once again, we are primed for some time type of, you know, purge, purification, transformation, powerful news, information, conversation, meetings, some type of like life changing or life redefining experience that is happening perhaps, but let's get into it. Let's look at how everything is coming together for us to open our week energetically, what we might be able to expect as we get this month started. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. And if you guys stick with me until the end of this report, I have also done a collective tarot reading for us because I like to tap the energy field for more than one modality whenever I'm doing these energy assessments just to get an additional energetic viewpoint on what's going on out there. So there could be some messages in there for you if you wanna stick around till the end. But we're starting with the astrology. We have big time astrology happening. If you guys watched my February overview, I was talking about how this month of February is functioning, I feel like, in terms of some type of cosmic reset, some type of collective rebirth process that is actually making corrections, okay? Removing blockages to growth so that organic, authentic potential that maybe have been stifled for a very long period of time can actually begin to come into fruition so that we can get back on on the path that is leading us somehow to an important purpose or potential or like destiny that needs to be activated right now as a part actually of a higher plan that's unfolding as we are in this shift of ages which we talk about all the time in this channel and this month throughout the month week by week like literally each week that's why I'm saying like a four-phase process we have personal planets that are coming into alignment with Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius. Now, Pluto is only ever at zero degrees of Aquarius once every 250 years or so. And the fact that Pluto happens to be at zero degrees of Aquarius for the beginning of Aquarius season, when all of these personal planets are hitting zero degrees of Aquarius, that's like kind of like monumental and profound because, you know, as I said, this only has an opportunity to happen once every 250 years, but that doesn't even necessarily mean that it will, because that would mean that the next time that Pluto comes to zero degrees of Aquarius 250 years from now, it would have to happen in exact alignment with when all of the personal planets are about to enter Aquarius because it's the zero degree. You know what I mean? Like that's why it's this big deal to me. Also, if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I was like, you know, jumping up and down about how when Pluto entered the sign of Aquarius, he didn't do so like in isolation on his own. He literally did so like holding hands, walking hands and hands with the sun. Okay. Entering the sign of Aquarius. They both moved from 29 Capricorn to zero Aquarius together. And that was a big deal for Pluto's entrance into Aquarius because, you know, as I said, but Pluto's a very slow moving planet and only comes into the sign, any sign, about once every 250 years. So the fact that that would have happened in exact alignment with the sun like that, which of course is, you know, at least in the West, the most notoriously known personal planet ruling, you know, our character and our spirit, the life force energy that flows through us, um, that was a big deal. And it was also the greatest, like, source of love 
light, right? The sun and Pluto, the Lord of the underworld. And that, so that to me was actually the beginning of this process that is going to be culminated throughout the course of the month of February. But still, that happened on the 20th of January. And even if we like, so, so basically between the 20th of January and the end of the month of February, and this even completes before the very end of the month. So it's basically like, you know, a four to five week period of time, we are having the five prominent and personal planets hit the alignment with Pluto at that zero degrees. Now, like I said, you know, it would be significant, you know, if they were hitting it one degree or two degrees or five degrees, just because it's the personal planets in Pluto. But the fact that it's that zero degree, that critical degree of the new sign as we're entering this new generation, Pluto Aquarius, moving towards this new age, like the zero degree, it holds all of the power and all of the potential and all of the octaves comprised in any sign. So it's a critical sign. It's like a powerhouse degree. And it's of course these new beginnings that could unfold into like the entirety of the potential, right? That is held within that sign. So for Pluto to be at the zero degree, okay, for every single one of the personal planets, the sun is going to hit or already did hit the sun and Pluto. Like I said, they went from 29. The sun assisted Pluto entering Aquarius. They were both at zero together. And then as we start this week, Mercury the mind, all right, our mental body, the informational field, which is to me, you know, Mercury and Aquarius sort of vibe really well together um, because of the air sign nature, like of the sign itself. And also Uranus ruling the sign of Aquarius is higher octave Mercury energy, sort of like Neptune is higher octave Venetian energy. Uh, Uranus is higher octave Mercury energy. So I always feel like Mercury and Aquarius kind of like have a good flow together and you know of course the mind the informational field like I said and Aquarius right the lightning bolt electrifying the mind awakening the mind and then we put the conjunction to Pluto there you guys I'm telling you this is like extremely transformative awakenings like mental stimulation that could like really be changing us in some way on some level this is like Honestly, like there are going to be people whose entire way that their mind is functioning, like neuropaths, like synapses, like all that type of stuff, um, <laughs> changing somehow as well, maybe being activated, things deep within us. You could also find honestly like deep memories or like long forgotten things suddenly like they have been like buried, like deep in the recesses of your mind kind of like coming online. But this is also on some very deep levels going to stimulate like that which is authentic and that which is true in regards to the way our mind is like meant to work or into like our own authentic perspective of stuff like this is going to empower like our individual view of things on one hand but it's also really probably going to be uh creating some like powerful conversations powerful messaging powerful meetings and stuff like that as well and like transactions things going back and forth um like renegotiating things and stuff as well there's a huge element that is wrapped up in all of this somehow also that has to do with like value worth material possessions security like resources even maybe like land or I don't know just like values or um financial like security like material security the things that are comfort zone also um and what we value what we perceive valuable the worth that we find and define in things and within ourselves with the Chiron influence this week and with the Venus influence this week this is also and Pluto also rules wealth okay Pluto rules like the things that are under the ground especially in ancient astrology you know that what is mined from deep under the ground like gold and like gemstones and minerals and things of tremendous value there is some profoundly valuable information awakening mental shift as I said earlier maybe even remembering something that like really empowers us on some level but Pluto is also, you know, death, rebirth, right? It can it can have to do with loss, but it's ultimately about this profound regeneration, this profound like healing and renewal and rebirth. Yes, there's the destructive side of the Pluto energy, but like 
it takes us deep and then you know it purifies it is the purge but it also purifies and then it regenerates and it evolves it's the phoenix energy and we're talking about that this week in the context of mercury the messenger planet so you could just have some like there could be powerful words that are coming out of your mouth out of nowhere and you're like where did that even come from you could just receive some very powerful understanding or insight into something or again the whole transformative like notion of the way that this energy functions as well but regardless you know any way you slice it there is just likely to be this sense of you know it's intensity okay um like a gravity also to the things that we are thinking about and um obsession right obsessions and compulsions but this is also like detective energy this is like x-ray vision okay that's also what this is is having like in like very very keenly penetrating insight into things being able to see through uh, basically any facade or anything like that, like being able to see into the core, see into the root to like really diagnose, you know, what's been going on under the surface. And again, you know, the flip side of this, of course, would be the other ways that I've been describing this, some type of profound or powerful awakening. So whether we're figuring something out, we're doing research into something that is changing our mind and changing our life is a byproduct or whether there's just this powerful knowing or like epiphanies this is also super duper like in the sign of Aquarius this is like instantaneous just knowings about stuff flashes of insight things just like hitting us like a truck out of nowhere that are just so like transformative in terms of you know the way that we've been viewing a situation or a scenario maybe um it's hard to say though, because there, this is also so Uranian in the way that it's functioning and playing out. I mean, not only do we have, you know, of course we're talking about the sign of Aquarius, which is going to be unpredictable, expect the unexpected. Uh, this is going to be unusual stuff also, Aquarius. <laughs> um, it's just out of the ordinary, okay? This is stuff that is like out of the box. Uh, hyper novelty. That's a phrase that I've been using that I've found out there that I feel like is very appropriate to the way the astrology is coming together. This sense of like hyper novelty perhaps that is just creating some type of radical dynamic shift or change in perspective, mindset, viewpoint, thought processes. Again, like I said, even like the way that our mind is working, people could find themselves extremely mentally stimulated. It could be very hard to sleep in this energy, although you could also be having some very profound and like prophetic dreams. Uranus, Pluto, this zero degree Pluto, these zero degree Pluto conjunctions, I do believe on one level are going to be very prophetic. We may May not be able to perceive it that way as things are playing out in the moment but I do think in retrospect you know when all has been said and done and we're sort of looking at the history of the times that we're in now um, and even thinking back on our own lives and the like the experiences that have presented as we've moved through this energy I do think we'll come to find like we had a much better sense of what was coming than maybe we knew at the period of time or just like things hitting us in this energy that you know have an element of future foresight and being able to sort of like make choices and decisions and um like plant seeds and stuff based on some of that future foresight that is coming in right now even again maybe if we're not perceiving it as such in the moment but this is just going to be a very psychic very prophetic like flashes of insight epiphanies instant downloads like I said things just like hitting us out of nowhere these instantaneous knowings that you know maybe just like alter our consciousness like that's what this is also is like it's like consciousness altering ideas experiences it's like that saying once your mind has been stretched to new dimensions like it can never go back to how it was before those aren't the exact words something like that but that's basically what this is it's like we are our our mind is going through some type of powerful regeneration right now which is going to like change the way that we think about things going forward and we're not going to be able to see ourselves our lives our realities the same after we move through this period of time 
And as I said, it's not just the mental body and the informational field that is going through this energetic upgrade and this collective evolution right now when we're talking about the Plutonic energy. It's going to be followed next week by Mars conjoining Pluto at zero Aquarius. Then we will have the, um, well, actually next week we, we get both the moon and Mars at zero Aquarius. And then we also get Venus closing it out at zero Aquarius as well, followed by the last week of the month of February this like <laughs> divinely oriented like reintegration and rebalancing and like coming back together and like processing and like <laughs> reharmonizing it all okay after like everything that we've been through maybe the dismantling and the breakdown of our various energetic bodies mind you know our true energy body we're going to be dealing with our physical body even perhaps as we get into the mars energy and then the venus energy like this is our heart center this is our desires and our preferences and our values and what we want what we love you know so it's hitting us on every single level throughout the course of this month and like i said we started with the sun and we also have the moon the moon is also during this exact same period of time happens to be coming to the exact same degree range in the sky that zero degree aquarius moon could be anywhere but it can't be it's got to be right here for the party which we'll be talking about later this week but all of these things, one after another after another, causing this like ripple or this snowball effect that by the time we get to the end of the month is going to lead to these just like profound personal transformations. And that second one, Mercury hitting this week in alignment with Chiron activations that are also happening. That's the other side of this coin. Yes, we are in a very platonic month. We are, you know, coming up against the Lord of the Underworld. We're facing our shadows, but we are also simultaneously, or, you know, another way that we could word the same experience is brought to us by this Chiron archetype, which is the wounded healer teacher, you know, master energy. This is a collective hero's journey journey through the underworld to face our fears and conquer our shadows and like release free this new version of ourselves to go forth and you know align with this greater destiny and this greater purpose that has always been waiting for us but for whatever reason maybe we haven't understood or we haven't been awake to or we haven't acknowledged or we've been you know trying to like ignore or neglect for some reason this is a period of time with Uranus activating this week as well. Remember, we're talking about Pluto. We're talking about Chiron. We're also talking about Uranus. Uranus makes the changes for us that we haven't been able to make for ourselves. Uranus is the galactic fixer. Uranus puts things right. And Uranus is always doing this for the purpose of aligning us with um, a future potential that has not yet come to pass, but that is in alignment with the cosmic blueprint that will come to pass. So Uranus is always, when Uranus is functioning, like removing blockages to growth. Anywhere we're getting off path, putting us back on, you know, anything that we have grown in our lives that is blocking our ability to see who we're truly meant to be, see, you know, that stuff being like plucked out and us, you know, it, it, having to get put back in a situation where we can move towards that higher purpose, whether we like it or not. You know, Uranus is all about disrupting comfort zones. A lot of times we get into patterns and, you know, we find ourselves in, 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 in comfort zones and in states of security where things feel good and they feel certain, but they're also stagnant and universe is always constantly looking to expand. And so, you know, when we get into those type of situations or if we are going down a path that is deep, attaching us from that higher purpose that is when lightning hits the tower the uh, great rectifier usually comes into our lives and things may feel like our entire world is getting flipped upside down but when uranus is operating things are always like better in the end there is always a silver lining there are always blessings in disguise and the blessings in disguise in this scenario and this journey through the underworld is going to be the tremendous level of value and power internally that we gain and that we perceive within ourselves and therefore that we are able to conduct our lives with in the world moving forward we are in like a crash course right now and taking back personal power and activating personal destiny and people are going to start radically changing. I'm telling you, you guys, 
do not have expectations for people this week. Do not have expectations for anybody else this month. This is a very good month to focus on our personal hero's journey, on our personal path of like evolution, on conquering the challenges that are placed before us right now, and not on trying to project any sense of lack of control that we might be experiencing internally in and of ourselves outward. This is not the month, you guys. This is not the cycle to try to interfere with anybody else's process. We all literally do absolute best right now to mind our own business, okay? Even if it's people that you really love and that you really care about. I mean, absolutely, if people are asking you for your advice, if people are asking you for your guidance, of course, of course, you know, you need to be there for them and help them out in any way that you can. However, if people aren't asking, if people aren't coming to you, this is unsolicited advice. And again, like trying to exert control over other people's processes, even if, you know, especially if we disagree with them, um, I, I said this in another video, like if, if you see somebody walking off a cliff and you're yelling, you know, there's a cliff, stop, don't do it. And you can see clearly what's, what's about to happen and they just refuse to listen, refuse to look up, refuse to answer. There is like a universal lesson plan that is coming through right now. And a lot of the mistakes that we are making are actually necessary to help us better understand and resonate and uh, be able to work in these new Aquarian frequencies that are coming in. So non-interventionism, if our efforts are not working is something that I've also been saying is probably going to benefit us in this energy because this is a very personal I mean, it's this hero's journey, right? It's this, and it's in the sign of Aries. It's this independent quest, but it's a very personal process right now that is going on between individuals and higher power, individuals and universe. And um, we need to focus on, you know, our own process of personal transformation with I mean it personal is just the word right now I mean we've got all of these personal planets uh hitting this powerful planet Pluto ruling power in all of its forms so the power right now is in our individual experience also Chiron in the north node like I said conjoining in Aries this is an independent quest this is a hero's journey nobody can do it for us <laughs> we have to do this on our own but the flip side of that is no one therefore also can ever take what we've gained, the value that we've gained, the power that we've gained through this experience from us. That is also uniquely ours. The, you know, what we have to do, the challenges we have to face, you know, it may be this solo journey. However, we are also, it is like also us and us alone that can truly benefit from the riches in terms of the soul growth that are to be gained as we move through this period of time and what that means for us in terms of the way that we are maneuvering through life moving forward after this experience. We've got, uh, universe is assisting us all to really change our lives in some capacity for the better in a lot of ways as a result of this process. But of course, you know, with great power comes great responsibility and we've got to deal with the responsibility before we can see and acknowledge the power and you know uh, people who have a lot of Chiron energy strong in their chart who have been dealing with these uh these archetypes and these situations and this concept of you know the the wounding and the victimhood and having to go through the independent journey to transmute the pain into power because that's really what it's all about at the end of the day it is alchemy it's soul alchemy when we're dealing with chiron we've got to change the lead into the gold we've got to transmute the wounding and the victimhood and the places that we've surrendered our power to this sense of profound wisdom that we gain through our experience and self-mastery and personal power whereby we are then released to co-create our experience much more consciously in a way that is much more rewarding and fulfilling with god spirit universe going forward remember we're going to be talking a lot about this as we go through this very Chiron oriented month, but just lots of rare astrology going on right now, generally. And these Chiron themes running through everything, a really big deal. Now, Mercury Pluto conjunction, that's obviously huge in and of itself. I described a lot of that energy, but we're also talking about Venus squaring Chiron simultaneously. 
Whenever we've got a lot of Chiron activations going on, this can be sort of like a raw, vulnerable energy. It can bring up places where we've been victimized or where we felt wounded. And it can, it can a lot of times just, um, remind us of our inadequacies. Sometimes we can feel a sense of like innate weakness and stuff like that. And we have three planets exactly aspecting Chiron on Monday the 5th while Mercury comes into conjunction with Pluto. Now I will tell you, two of these planets are the sun and the moon. Again, these very personal significant planets. Uh, the sun by sextile exactly and the moon in Sagittarius is going to be an exact trine to Chiron and Aries while Venus and Capricorn is an exact square. Now, also, you know, like I've said, we do have a Chiron North Node conjunction coming up, which means that Chiron and the North Node are currently in a conjunction. You know, now it will be exact on the 11th, but they're only one degree out now. So if all of these planets are activating Chiron, they're also therefore activating the nodes of the moon, the moon itself by trine and sextile, the sun itself by trine and sextile, and Venus by square. So, while this Chiron energy is being activated, this is what this means to me, okay? When we have both the sun and the moon in these positive aspects to Chiron and the nodes, trine, sextile, this is facilitating things. We're dealing with Chiron and we're dealing with the nodes. What is this facilitating for us? This is facilitating actually some type of healing and release from past patterning, past states of victimhood. Now, what are these past patterns and states of victimhood coming up? Likely to do with relationships, part partnerships, self-worth, and our value systems or our relationship to material things like money, possessions, stuff like that. There could definitely be a very like obsessive and like possessive and compulsive energy going on this week to sort of uh, keep things how we want them to be, to like grab onto things, to like sort of try to like hold on to what we feel like might be like slipping out of our grasp, okay? Um, or the obsession could also be coming through in terms of the damage that has been done to us. Like who's wounded us, the pain that we've been caused, like um, what's been done to our heart. You know, this is a Venus Chiron square. We've got the sun and the moon making the positive aspects, but it's the Venus square. So it's just likely to come down to like somewhere that our heart has been hurt or maybe even our image somewhere that our image has been hurt as well or maybe it could even be like a sense of inner peace and inner balance that you know is going on but some type of wounding relationships our image our values possessions money partnerships however like i said because the sun and the moon are also in these positive aspects and we do have the Pluto uh, Mercury situation it's like and in the nodes there as well this is destiny and karma the north node in Aries with Chiron this is this faded hero's journey this faded like phase or of of you know, wounding that is necessary to result in some type of growth that is setting us on a correct trajectory to something somehow. You guys see how this is coming together? So it's like, whatever wounding is coming up, whatever insecurity we're dealing with, whatever upset to our comfort zone, whatever is disturbing our peace or hurting our heart or bringing up wounds in regards to our ability to have relationships with others, to have relationships to ourselves, there is something about this on a higher level that is necessary to actually release us from this very pattern that is causing this experience, okay? It's like it's like a finalization of it almost. It's like, yes, we're going through it, but it's like, it's for the last time and it's actually for the purpose of helping us to overcome break through complete this cycle or you know transcend out of it transmute this situation uh go through this hero's journey that is taking us from states of victimhood to states of self-mastery where we are ultimately being released into this higher version of ourselves in alignment with this divine potential that is waiting for us that we're being called towards right now with all of this energy that is activating destiny and potential aquarius is a sign about facilitating the ability of the future to come to the present by removing blockages to authentic growth. And that future is in alignment with a cosmic blueprint that needs to come to pass on like these higher levels. Okay. So when we're talking about 
this being a very Aquarian energy, that is the purpose of all of this. We are healing from being released from cycles of the past that were in any way preventing us from fulfilling a higher purpose and mission that universe needs us to align with right now. That's what this is. So if you're feeling any of that, or if you feel like your life is following along this trajectory, it's because you are being activated right now to step into a greater destiny, maybe that you had not been aware of, but is on some level necessary in order to like anchor this new energy and facilitate our literal transition of ages into the age of Aquarius. This is like big time stuff. You know what I was talking about? Like this only has an opportunity to happen once every 250 years, if that. All right. So, um, you know, that's where we're at. That's what this energy is doing, representing sudden and dynamic change for the purpose of making corrections, removing blockages to growth, uh, facilitating the unfolding of cosmic potential to align the present with the divine vision of the future. Um, and in order to do that right now, like we've got to be released from these past cycles. We've got to stop seeing ourselves as victims. We've got to discover our ability to conquer our weaknesses and like move forward in an empowered way to do whatever role, serve whatever role or purpose, greater purpose universe has for us right now as we are all like the Aquarius energy, like I said, this is going to be 20 years where future potential is like allowed to come into fruition without a tremendous amount of effort uh, blocking the authentic growth of that process. We've been living in an energetic environment that has been really comprised of fundamentally inversions of that which is necessary for organic growth and evolution like in alignment with this unfolding cosmic blueprint as we have been especially over the course of this past 15 years in the uh, um, Capricorn Pluto generation which is about empowering the past systems of the past control systems of the past uh, authorities of the past and being very um, structured and like attached to and controlled by powerful elite forces okay but as we're moving into this new energy now that we are in the Aquarius energy uh the Pluto and Aquarius energy we are moving from centralized power to decentralized power and we are going to have to break out of a lot of these boxes that have defi been defining um you know a lot of our history okay and as a result of that you know we have this week coming through right now which is hitting the reset on the mental energy and which is collapsing the boxes that uh we've been contained in within the past and again this is contributing to this sentiment of hyper novelty which is going to be gaining um or becoming just a very obvious thing as we move throughout the course of the rest of this year and primarily, you know, the spring and into the fall, it's going to be crazy. Um, so something deeply personal and revealing could definitely be happening this week, functioning to bring some type of breakthrough into a new phase of personal growth or experience for us, a personal rebirth of some kind defined by whatever we overcome and or persevere through as we move through this energy. Also, as I said, this very independent process, no one can do this stuff for us, uh, but no one will also be able to gain the value that we gain through going through this process. And I want you guys to understand also, we're very protected, okay? Uh, even though things are likely to feel unstable. Uh, the other thing that we had, the other things we have playing out this week besides the exact uh, Mercury-Pluto conjunction and also this Chiron, these exact Chiron activations, we also have Sun squaring Uranus all week, which comes exact on the 8th. Venus is also trining Uranus all week. So it's like I was saying, you know, Uranus is the galactic fixer. So yeah, you know, we might be on this hero's journey through the underworld, but it is taking us to a better place. It's because we need the experiences that we're going through now in order to be able to become who we're meant to become that, you know, pressure makes diamonds, you know, it's that whole sentiment. It's like, we've got to go through these experiences so that we can become who we need to become so that we can fulfill or serve this higher purpose of universe even if we don't ever even if we live our whole lives and never even 
even if you live your whole entire life and never perceive yourself as having completed some type of greater mission for universe, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, whether you perceive it or not, this next 20 years, you are, you're doing it. Even if it feel like it's the most insignificant thing, it's not. Wherever we're being aligned, whatever path we're being sort of like prodded towards, whatever is falling away and coming into our lives right now, it is necessary in order for some future to come to pass on a greater, higher cosmic, grander level. Remember, we're talking about Aquarius. This is the whole, right? This is the overall collective. This is the overall whole of humanity. But also, it's how the individual uniqueness that we all have fits into that whole in order so that this whole entire story can be makes sense okay we are all the individual lights that are illuminating the collective story when we are dealing with aquarius energy and so we all have <laughs> like a purpose that we are going to be put on a path towards and it is that we are likely going to be awakening to that realizing that aligning ourselves with that coming to understand that something along those lines or even just like thinking differently in a way that will again put us on the path to that throughout the course of this month of february and it's something that we got to do alone. But I'm telling you guys, like I said, we are being protected. We actually have the sun on Monday when all of this is going on at 17 degrees of Aquarius, a watchdog standing guard and protecting his masters and possessions. Again, like, you know, on one hand, we want to be careful that we are not holding on too tightly to physical things right now. There is an element of this, you guys, Uranus in the sign of Taurus upsets to comfort zones upsets to like material like possessions and um just or not even upsets necessarily but like shakeups and changes and um it will be for the best but we just don't we need to be flexible we need to go with the flow right now and we need to be able to maintain the perspective that things are happening like for the best even if we are perceiving things as being like unfortunate or you know they're making us feel insecure or you know we're really having an issue like understanding why things are happening right now another part of like the entrance exam dynamic of this energy as we are beginning this we're just getting our feet wet and the stronger Aquarius energy is the trust in the higher plan the trust in that potential the trust in that like I have to know that even in utmost uncertainty, my expectation is that things are going to end up being better than I even could have imagined and being able to stay in that frame of mind and on that track despite maybe having no idea how things are going to play out tomorrow. Um, this is just one of the ways that the Uranus, the Uranus energy activates. A lot of times it puts us in positions where we have no choice but just to ride on faith, to only allow ourselves to see the positive outcome, to like, it's like being on a tightrope, you know what I mean? And just focus, laser focus ahead on the path ahead, one foot in front of the other, not looking to one side, not looking the other side, definitely not looking down, definitely not looking back. But if we just keep going like that, you know, not giving into the fear, okay, and not questioning maybe even too much the possibilities of negative things that could happen, we will make it to the end of that tightrope. And when we do, and we look back, we'll be like, oh my God, I'm some type of superhero that I didn't even know that I was. And that is one of the ways that all this energy is coming together to change the way that we do life going forward. Because if you come to find that you're a secret superhero because of what you realized you can do when you never thought you had that in you before, it's going to, you're not going to do life the same anymore going forward. And that is what this is all about. Okay. So our, our, when we've got Chiron operating, um, our wounding, our fears, our pain, this is what is awakening us, okay? This is the catalyst to this dynamic change that is showing us our true power and showing us what we're really capable of. And, you know, as I said, changing the way that we are interacting, interfacing with our own reality going forward, which is also exactly what a Mercury-Pluto conjunction will do. So honestly, you guys, like, 
we're getting a mental upgrade like we're being reprogrammed on subconscious levels that's also what this is this is deeply reprogramming our subconscious minds and that also is going to tremendously impact what we are attracting and what we are I mean, then we're, of course, you know, we're moving towards the Venus Pluto, which is also going to be transforming what we're attracting and desiring in our lives. So it all fits together beautifully. We have tremendous universal assistance as we are recalibrated, upgraded, and moving through this process of conscious awakening and uh, evolution as a collective right now. And we're just going to stay with it, you guys. Um, these are very exciting times. Um, very rare times and we've got a journey we've got a mission north node chiron <laughs> activating in the sign of aries this month coming together we've got a mission and it's all about conquering our fears and overcoming that which has held us back in the past to open us to unlimited potentials and possibilities that maybe we had never imagined for ourselves the sky is the limit you guys um we just gotta figure that out. And that's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to stop talking about the astrology now. That's what I have to say for the astrology today. Let's talk about the tarot. I'm going to do a really quick tarot reading. We got all pentacle cards coming out today. We got the first card that's coming out was the 10 of pentacles. It came out sideways. I'm very like the way that a card comes out to me is another thing that I take into, you know, my symbolic interpretation when I'm looking at this. And so I feel like, and then after that, we got the, uh, the six of pentacles, and then we had the four of pentacles in reverse on the back of the deck. All of this pentacle energy, Uranus in the sign of Taurus, Venus in Capricorn, squaring Chiron in the sign of Aries. Chiron and Venus are both financially oriented. There could be some financial uncertainty going on. There could be some upsets to the comfort zone, some upsets to the status quo, some upsets in regards to commitments or partnerships uh, that we've been involved in maybe for a long period of time, or things could genu genuinely just feel shaky. Now this card is not in reverse, it's just on its side. So I think that it's actually like more of an appearance of things being maybe unstable again than the reality of things but what the reality of things is is that things are being rebalanced somehow things are being kind of like weighed out and maybe that's us internally over the course of the next couple weeks and as we go through these pluto conjunctions rediscovering what we value rediscovering what we prioritize rediscovering what we want what we want to put our time and energy into maybe this is a process of you know us sort of weighing some things internally that could could maybe be moving us away from having the same regard for some you know partnership or relationship or value system or possession or material like asset resource whatever in some way like as we move through this period of time but with the the four of pentacles on the back of the deck in reverse this is also talking about coming to a point of being able to let something go not you know holding on to it for dear life and actually realizing you know, we've got to reassess something like something has to be, you know, as I said, like the, the, we've got to figure out what is worth it to us and what is not worth it to us anymore. And maybe there's a state of security or maybe there's like a financial situation or maybe even like, um, a commitment that we're a part of, right? The partnership commitment, type of stuff it could even have to do with like family or you know just things that we have been um our foundations and the things the things that we've been a part of for long periods of time and also you know material resources assets like i said very obviously we're talking about the coins so this could really have a lot to do with finances but there could we could just be sort of reevaluating what is worth it to us what we value what we prioritize and coming to a point in time where we feel like we're ready to let go of that which is no longer measuring up to these new defined value systems that we're bringing in right now um and maybe you know needing to open up or create some space for something else that we're realizing we do need to reestablish ourselves somehow or to feel more secure in our physical environment somehow so there could just be some type of lack of security going on 
in terms of, you know, possessions or relationships or partnerships, stuff like that, that we are kind of trying to figure out what is worth it, what is not, what we need to keep and what we need to release right now. So I feel like that is the way that the tarot message is coming together. And with again, with all the Chiron energy, with all the Venus energy, we could definitely be questioning what is worth it to us what we want to continue to hold on to um, as we move forward through this personal transformation and rebirth, which is likely to be a thing. Now, I will tell you also, early degree fixed sign people, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, Leo, zero to five degree planets, you guys are part of the big show right now, and it's going to be by square and opposition. You're probably really going to be filling these Pluto aspects. Air sign people, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, zero degrees to five degrees. You guys are also a part of this party. You're probably going to be feeling this as well. Mercurial people, people who are strong, um, Gemini, Virgo energy while Mercury conjoins Pluto. You guys are probably going to be getting this pretty heavy as well. Also, mid-range degree fire sign people sag leo and aries you guys have trines going on to the north node chiron conjunction you guys are probably going to be feeling that and lastly cardinal sign people if you've got mid-range i'd say about 12 to 18 degrees aries libra cancer capricorn you guys are probably really feeling these um you guys are probably really feeling this chiron oriented like destined journey hero's journey type of stuff that i've been talking about as well because it's squaring your planets by signs so that if you have uh, any of that going on you are really a part a big player in the game right now we all are of course because we all have these energies somewhere in our own natal chart but you know, people who really have strong planets, zero degrees, fixed and air signs, Mercury people, also mid-degree fire signs, mid-degree cardinal signs. That is where all the action is happening right now. So that's that. Let's grab a synchronicity card now, you guys. God, spirit, universe. What is a message that we need to know as we move through this week? What uh, should we keep in mind? while we really get our journey through the underworld kicked off this week and it says stop don't argue the lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace exodus 14 14 and i do feel like this is going to be a thing because Mercury, this is the verbalization energy, right? Like I said, there's going to be powerful conversations going on. And also, very Pluto, this can be a very ruthless energy as well, okay? Um, this card says, don't fight or argue. Rest in the assurance God is working for you on this matter. Relax, let go, and know a divine solution takes place. Harmony will return. Behave now as if it is already before you. And that's exactly what I was describing earlier in the way that we are being tested in a lot of cases in this new Uranian energy. What are we going to do when everything seems to be hitting the fan right in front of us? Are we going to freak out and, you know, go into complete panic and have a total meltdown and, you know, enlist everybody under the sun to try to help us solve our problem or are we going to say okay well this is an interesting situation that I find myself in I wonder how things are going to play out I think I'm going to sit here and believe that everything is actually going to turn out miraculously in a much better way than I can imagine and things are actually just going to come together for me somehow and I'm very curious to see how uh God, Spirit Universe plans on solving this problem for me right now. I'm telling you guys, I actually had this exact experience happen to me over the course of this past week. I've had this exact experience happen to me a lot of times, actually. That's one of the ways that I'm very familiar with how uh, this Uranian energy has a tendency to operate. But I've been watching it happen to other people, too. It's like there's something that has to go on. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this Mack truck of interference comes in. And it looks like, oh, my God everything is horrible. There is no way that I'm going to proceed and be able to do this thing that I really, really need to do. What am I to do? I'm telling you guys, uh, 
I would say probably eight to nine times out of 10 right now in the strong Uranian energy, you don't need to do anything. You just need to step back, not freak out, trust that somehow things are not as they seem and you're gonna, you know, envision yourself carrying through on whatever it is that you need to do. And somehow miraculously, you're likely to be very surprised that, oh, what do you know? It actually, that thing that I thought was such a big issue, it actually turned out not to be any type of an issue at all. And it really seems like it was just a test on how I was going to react in a situation where there was no predictable outcome. Like that's the type of stuff that we're dealing with, okay? And that's what I'm talking about when I say uh, that we need to learn to just have faith, to set our, you know, expectations for things unfolding in a way that is, you know, going to work out somehow and not freaking out and just trying to control everything. That's the old energy. The new energy is being able to, in a state of uncertainty, trust the process and to know some freaking how it's all going to work out. And that's exactly what this card is saying. So as we're going through this very intense mental energy, we don't need to fight. We don't need to argue. We need to realize things are being realigned, fixed, worked out on a higher power uh, or according in alignment with a higher power. A lot of what we're experiencing right now is just to see how we're going to react. And we need to know also, like I said, this is a four phase process. These first three phases, these are the reboot. These are the reset. These are the rebirth. The fourth phase, the last week, that's the reintegration. That's the reharmonization. That's things coming back together. That's these states of wholeness internally after the storm, okay? That's like things being fused back together in a way that is much stronger and actually like solidifying these changes within ourselves and within the new foundations that we're going to begin going forward. And it literally says, you know, on this card, harmony will return, behave now as it's already before you. By the time we get to the end of this month, things are going to come together somehow. No fear, you guys, the watchdog on guard, protecting his master and possessions and we have harmony that will be returned so we don't need to uh, fight the process all right so that's what I'm gonna say today you guys message from the stars message from the cards I hope you guys liked it if you did like it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share it with your friends if you think they would also like narrating the shift of the ages with us leave me comments you guys I love you all so much I'm so grateful for your presence here please let me know if you are having experiences that match up with what I'm talking about in these videos that information is very valuable to me and I truly appreciate everything you guys have to say your input and your contributions to the conversation. Thank you guys so much for being here. Information is powerful. And like I said, uh, what you guys, you know, have to say is meaningful to me and I appreciate it. So thank you for that. And if you want to know what's on these whiteboards, I have a Facebook group in my description box below where I post these images and Jana Shulman, the creator of our lovely synchronicity cards, posts the synchronicity cards over there as well. So that's where you can find that if you want that and come back with me on Wednesday, guys, we are going to be talking about our exact sun square Uranus, Venus trying Uranus energy that we have coming in this week. Remember, this is another week of expect the unexpected, very strong Uranian influence. Things are not likely to be predictable or not likely to go as planned, but we don't need to overreact. And I'm again, a lot of what's going on right now is going to work itself out somehow. So I will see you guys back on Wednesday. Have a beautiful start to your week. And until then, bye guys.